Someone stole our doghouse from the backyard. And my family starts screaming and yelling about, we have to get him a new doghouse. And those doghouses are like 150 bucks. I'm like, oh, y'all tripping. So I started going around the neighborhood, and I was looking in people's backyards, and I found my doghouse. I went up to him and told him, I'm taking my doghouse back. And then I took it back, I put it in the backyard, and my dog is in there now. <laughs> that her husband Terrence has been hoarding more than $100,000 in 16 different bank accounts while his family is living in a home with no beds and no furniture. Why keep those accounts secret from your wife, Terrence? Well, first of all, because she's a spendthrift, all right? If you put one penny in the account, she's going to spend it by the end of the day. But That's she's your wife. She's your partner, 27 years. And I love years. her dearly, so I'm providing for her. I'm making sure that she has houses that are paid off, cars that are paid off, that she has money in the bank. Do you agree Be with what he's saying? Do you think he has a right to do... No? Right on. Thank you for the... Mi do you feel betrayed by him having all this money? And when I found out, yeah, I did. You, you did? Know, um... But we've, we've worked on it. And remember, so. I let you do the budget one year. Do you remember what happened? What happened? Oh, we were in debt by the end of three months. So she begged me to do the budget oh, over. But we had fun. So <laughs> we had fun. You went on vacation. You, you went to dinner. And we spent money. All right. Well, let me get Scott and Bethany involved. Scott and Bethany Palmer are money therapists and the authors of the Five Money Personalities, speaking the same love and money language. They have helped hundreds of couples get their financial lives back on track. Scott and Bethany, thank God you're here. <laughs> How common are money conflicts in relationships? Money conflicts are huge because there's a money component to just about every decision that we make. And then we marry our opposite or our opposite money personality. And then those collisions happen all the time. It's amazing. And we don't think about the money component. We think about the finances and the, the strategic financial part of it. But we don't think about the day-to-day -day decisions we make where money's involved. And money is one of the main reasons people get divorced, right? Seventy percent of divorces mm. are over money. So with this couple here, I mean, I mean, it's a huge issue, right? I mean, they're adorable. They're adorable. They have this beautiful family. But what up? The fact that they have no furniture? I mean, he doesn't seem any, see anything wrong with them sleeping on mattresses on the floor. They have all this money. They have all these assets, but yet nothing to show for it inside the house. Well, there's a couple issues there. The first issue is, and I'd like to address those 16 accounts because that's crazy. Um, that's what we call financial infidelity because you've got a total lack of transparency when it comes to those accounts. And I think it's just as bad as sexual infidelity. So that's my really? I do. So he's cheating on her in a way. Absolutely. And but it feels a whole lot better. Well, for you. <laughs> so um, I think another point is, is that you've got a situation here where you are putting all the things that are important to you in front of your family. I mean, for instance, your son talking about that $100. First of all, he was totally humiliated by that process. Second of all... You mean his, his birthday. His birthday his, gave yeah, him $100 sorry, his for his birthday, birthday and, and he expected him to pay for And he had to pay above and beyond that. Well, what are you saying to your son? What you're saying to your, your son is, you're not worth $100. He's worth a whole lot more than that. I paid for his college education. Does he... I mean... It's Come good. on, baby. I, got, I get down with the money. No, I put my family first. But guess what? I make sure they have the money to spend. But, but you don't let them spend it. I mean, you just said it. She can't touch the budget. She can't do this. She can't do that. So what is the answer? Because here's the thing. Money impacts just about every decision you make. And if you say, I'm going to do it my way, and you're, I'm going to do it my way, you have those separate money lives. You cannot come together and have the intimacy in your relationship that you could have if you understood each other and tried to compromise and speak the other person's money personality. But if Not he's a yours, saver, the other person. if he's a saver by nature and she's a spender by nature, how right. do they come together? Well, there's a great word called compromise, which I think we've lost in society, that mm -hmm. word. But you can do it, but not at the price of hurting yourself, mm -hmm. but in giving to the other person in the relationship. Mm -hmm. I can give, Scott, for example, he's a secondary money person, he's a security seeker. I'm a risk taker. So I can give a gift to Scott by helping him seek some security, and then he can give me a gift by helping and, and having some more risks, like vacations, for example. I love different vacations every year. He wants to go to the same place every year doing the same thing. He's a security seeker. So one year we do it his way, one year we do it my way. There's comp going on, but that builds the relationship, and that's what we want to protect. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm gonna go out on a limb. Should uh, Terrence here get his wife some furniture? Yes. <laughs> First step, compromise. Compromise. Spend a few bucks and get a coffee table? That's absolutely. And a couch, a lazy boy furniture. maybe? And where, you know, where does all this money come from? Because if you both are working and you've been putting money into this pot, you've helped build those accounts as well. So part of that compromise would be, hey, it's great that you have these 16 accounts and this 100,000 or so dollars, but she's helped put money into that. Now you should be able to take some of that out and furnish your home. Yeah, they're married. It's both of theirs. Absolutely. All right. Good luck to you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you for bringing your change. <laughs> Everyone in our audience will receive a copy of Scott and Bethany's new book, The Five Money Personalities. Thank you so much. Up next, is it possible to look chic on the cheap? A high-end fashionista will show us how when we come back.